Hello, dosto. My name is Deepak, and with me is Sanjeev Ji. And those of you guys who don't know, we have a real estate and F bar webinar that is going to happen on May 13th. So we are about a month away. Those of you guys who are watching it in California this year, you guys probably already know that our tax filing uh, deadline have been extended till October 15th. So you have plenty of time to kind of take care of those kind of things. But just want to remind everyone that if you owe taxes, please do pay those. Uh, now, if you have not already paid them, because uh, you know the extension is only for filing your taxes, not for uh, paying. So, if you owe any money, please do take care of that to avoid kind of uh, penalties. And as Sanjeevji always remind, IRS is really, really good uh, with the sending notices a little bit later than they should, and by that time, we have a lot of penalties kind of. Uh, uh, add up. So please do take care of that. So talking about real estate uh, webinar. So this is something we do once a year and people love it because we talk about all sorts of strategies uh, related to real estate. You know, what does a real estate professional status mean? How can you achieve that status? What kind of advantages you get by uh, having that status? For example, right now, um, there's a lot of news about Trump case, right? Everybody's talking about Trump right now. Believe me or not, but he's a real estate professional, right, Sanjeev Yes, he's so, real estate. That's why so, he was able to write off everything unless he's under income. So, so you, that's a very classic case, and uh, it, there's nothing special about him. It's mm -hmm. not like he, yeah. he did something wrong. I mean, you can do it, I can do it, everybody can do it, mm -hmm. providing we qualify as a real estate professional. So we're gonna talk about that, how you can qualify. You could be, um, you know, uh, whatever it is that you're doing, but if you're involved in real estate, that is something you do want to consider. We'll talk about short-term rentals. Airbnb is very, very popular. Um, so there are a lot of strategies around using short-term rental to reduce your active taxable income. And we'll talk more about what is active, what is passive, and how your tax buckets are divided. So so we'll talk a lot about that. Um, in, in addition to that, what other advantages that you might have with real estate, such as commercial real estate, your personal residence, and, and so much more uh, related to real estate. So please, if you have not joined this webinar, if you have not signed up, I strongly urge that you go to sanjeevcpa.com. Sign up. It's no cost. It's free. Just come join us uh, on that webinar. And then a couple months down the road, uh, around in, I think, July, we will have a live seminar where Sanjeevji and I will be there in person and you can come meet with us and you can also ask us your questions at that time. In the end of the year, in December, um, I think it's December 2nd, second, second, second. right? So December 2nd, we're going to have the Wealth Summit. So you can also register for that in advance starting now. So that way you can save that seat as well. All right. So that's all the stuff that's happening in future. Now, today I want to ask Sanjeevji a few questions that some of you guys have asked uh, re regarding real estate. Just kind of uh, get you thinking as to what kind of opportunities might be there. So Sanjeevji. Here's yeah. my first question to you. Yeah, before I before I I just want to uh, point to the listeners, uh, to the viewers, not to the person. So, so Sanjeev, you do so much radio that he <laughs> always think that people are listening, <laughs> but today people are watching. <laughs> so a few things about the tax deadline because a lot of confusion still exists. Today is March 11th, uh, April 11th, and April 18th is the deadline for extension. Now, if you are a California resident and you have paid most of your taxes on your withholding on W-2s and you are either getting a refund or you are getting to get uh, uh, pay taxes very less amount, let's say $5,000, $10,000, then you don't have to worry about the date of April 18th. You can always file any time till October 16th. But if you have a business or if you have a, a K-1 coming from business owned in other states, uh, the other state deadline is not extended. So only the state of California, Arkansas, and uh, Georgia are extended. So let's say you own a real estate or you own a business in uh, Georgia, in uh, not in Georgia, Georgia's state, say North Carolina. So definitely you need to file the extension for North Carolina state because you have income source from there. So for that, you need to file the return on time. Otherwise, you will forget to file extension for North Carolina. And when you file the return, Late, in later part of the year, you get penalty from not, not, not filing the extension. So that's number two. Number three, if you owe a lot of taxes, uh, let's say you have uh, RSUs vesting or the ISOs vesting uh, or you have a big uh, bonus given to you or you have a very good year in your business or if you sell a, sell a property, whether the property sale can be in India, can be here and you have gains from the sale of property and you do not pay taxes. Of course, when you sell property here, you pay the estimated tax for the California, 
because the, the closing escrow people do require you to file that form, uh, but you don't pay for federal. So if you've not done that part and you not pay taxes, now remember the, there are four equal installment payment for estimate taxes for individual, which are April 15th, June 15th, September 15th, and January 15th of next year. So if you're not paid those estimate tax payment equally over the period of three installment, uh, then you will be subject to a lot of penalties and interest just because you're filing the date uh, late. So for them, it's important to file the extension, calculate the estimate tax payment due, and make and file the, and go and make the payment with the extension so that you can avoid the interest and penalty. Otherwise, interest and penalty can kick you very hard. For those, for remember the January 15 deadline payment. Payment deadline for January 15 is extended to October 16. Not April 15th of last year, not June 15 of last year, not September 15 of last year. And for if you are own an LLC in California, LLC fees for 22 must be paid by June 15th of 21, uh, June 15 of 22. You cannot extend that date for payment of LLC fees because otherwise else franchise tax would another. Uh, I don't call to, I don't want to call them as a beast, but they are beast. Uh, so, uh, so they will come after you and ask them to pay those penalties, those big penalties. If you are owing taxes for California, eight hundred dollars or any other taxes on based on your income, uh, of course, uh, because for federal we know it is a uh, past two entities, it flows to your personal, but not the California. California corporations you have to pay taxes. Uh, so if you owe taxes and you did not pay estimate tax payment last year, for businesses is four installment is April 15, June 15, September 15, and December 15. So not January 15, which is for individual taxes. So, so we have to be really, really careful. This is a kind of a very weird, confusing tax season for a lot of people. I, I get, get on calls with the client. They say, oh, I, the date is extended. Why don't I don't say, no, no, no. Date is extended for filing, not for tax payments. So look at your uh, the, look at your W-2s, look at your income levels for last year, calculate the estimate tax payment withholding done on your W-2s and see if you're underpaying or overpaying. If you're overpaying, you don't have to worry. If you're underpaying it, please do file the extension with the tax payments. And I, I have a feeling, Sanjeevji, I think this year, because of this whole timing thing, a lot of people will get confused. Oh, totally confused. <laughs> they say, oh, date is extended, but they, they don't understand. Date is extended for not for ta payments of taxes, but not only for e-filing, for filing the returns. And only date of one installment of extended, which is January 15th. Yeah, January and, and then there are just so many different deadlines. As Sanjeevji already talked about, you got an S corporation, so you have a corporation fees, that's a different deadline. You got, if you have a business in different states, or if you have own real estate in different states, income is generated in different states, there's a different deadline. Yes. Um, so there are a lot of these scenarios coming out in here. But anyhow, I think the best idea is to go talk to your tax professional and uh, you know don't wait till October 15th. Oh, don't wait. Right, yeah. that would be our... Uh, our advice there. So let's get started. So Gigi, I want to ask you some questions real uh, regarding real estate. So, and this will kind of give you an idea of what kind of questions you should prepare for the webinar. So here's the one. I own a condo that I'm renting and trying to figure land value to subtract out from my purchasing cost to get my basis for depreciation. What is a simple way to do that? Okay. So Real estate has different components. It can be condo, it can be townhouse, it can be multi, multi, multiple complexes, it can be commercial building, it can be self rental. So when it comes to a, a condo, the land is not there because condo is, is housed in a society or in an area, cooperative society or in a- You don't own the land, you, you own the own building. That. You don't know, you just, so that it's so- But, but so Gigi, uh, let me, uh, in some condos, by the way, you do own the land. Some, some yeah, condos so. they own, so, but the percentage of land ownership will be very less. Right. So I will give 10% for land ownership, depending upon the square footage of the area, uh, like it's a single story or double story, multi-story. Uh, then I will give the 20%, otherwise it's 10% for land. So whatever value you purchase the condo for, take 10% as the land value or 20% if you want to be conservative. And then 80% will be depreciable building for, for, the, for the rental purposes. Yes. So this is a very good question, in my opinion, because of two reasons. Number one is a lot of time people kind of think of this number from insurance because when you're getting insurance people always ask you what's the replacement cost so people kind of know that number on yearly basis 
So I'm glad that you kind of clarify that is that might not necessarily be the true number to look at. You yes, really or they look at the property tax assessment value and they figure out, oh, the property tax assessment values land is this much and building is this much. So the ratio is what? So it's not based on that. So if you own a, a condo, 90%. If you own a townhouse, yeah, again, 80% uh, uh, for building, uh, 70 to 80% for building. And if you own a, a single family home, so naturally the land is much higher so it's 40 percent per land so you have to be careful on the what type of activity you have what type of nature of real estate investment you have and, and just for clarification purposes and duty so depreciation is not based on market value of property no. but rather the purchase price of the property purchase price plus uh, uh, closing cost whatever you pay for or improvements. Or improvements you pay for. So all those things are part of the uh, depreciative basis for real estate. All right. So I hope that clarifies that. Uh, so that's that was a good question. I like that. All right. Here's a second one. Um, so I really should take depreciation on the building, but I do. Uh, but do I have to take depreciation on furniture and appliances? So yes. these are all the additional things. So I'm assuming. Obviously, he's talking about depreciation, all that. So that means it must be an investment property in this case. Yes. So I want to bring this a very good question. And I want to bring a few facts here, factors here. Number first factor is, are you a registered professional or not? If you're not a registered professional, is this a passive activity? Let's say you bought a home in taxes for rent. Now, Taxes, is no, you don't pay any taxes tax on that income, but of course, for being a California, you have to include uh, in the California, but you don't pay, but it decreases the rate, California tax rate on that income anyway. So when it comes to investment in uh, taxes and you're not, prop, you're not actively involved because you're here, so you can't be just managing that from here. So getting a higher depreciation does not work for your benefit because whatever higher depreciation you get, you'll get losses and that losses will be carried forward, not use that losses against your current income. So if you have furniture, if you have appliances, if you do all kinds of uh, tangible improvements inside the home, going for cost segregation or going for 179 depreciation or going for bonus depreciation on those assets doesn't make sense because you cannot utilize the losses against your other income. So in that case, it's important to go with the normal depreciation uh, you can, have, you can claim for furniture appliance, you can claim normal depreciation, you don't have to claim faster depreciation. So normal depreciation for furniture appliances is, is equivalent, so seven years is a, a normal time. So depreciate over a period of time. And remember, when you sell that property later on, the depreciation that you have claimed so far will be recaptured. So anyway, you're going to pay tax of 25% on the recapture tax on the depreciation. So why to take extra depreciation? Unnecessary. It is not going to ta get tax benefit upfront. Now, if you are a real estate professional, you bought a property in uh, California, managing the real estate, putting hours into it, there are three qualifications, 750 hours or more, there's a uh, material participation rules and at-risk limitations. So if you're, if you're investing money in that, if you are buying that, if you are a real estate professional, uh, then it makes perfect sense to do cost segregation for all the improvements, to do the depreciation on all the furniture, all the equipment, appliances that you've done inside your home, get faster depreciation, get losses from them, and use your losses to set up your other income that may be found out from other businesses or from W2 income of your spouse if you're married. So it makes perfect sense in that case. So it really depends upon whether you're a registered professional or not. Now, some of you guys might be thinking that, look, I'm gonna get depreciation today if I do some of these techniques that Sanjeev did talk about, or I will get that benefit later on. One way or the other, you will get it, right? So why get it today? Right? What's the advantage of taking that today? So that's what I'm saying. If you can get the advantage, if you take the advantage today, you have to use the losses generating from higher depreciation to be setting off other income. If not, no use of taking higher depreciation today. Exactly. And that's, that's another great reason why you want to join the webinar because we are going to talk about this subject in great detail as to what steps you have to take now so that way you can take those a losses against your active income and reduce your taxable income. Yes. Right, Sanjeevji? Yes. All right, so I hope uh, that gives you a reason to join. I think you will, you're going to love this webinar if you're on it. All right, so let's uh, go to the next one. I'm a single member LLC, so almost like a sole proprietor, but he has set up a 
uh, company and I have three long term rentals under my escort along with my active business and I have an ordinary loss in the year 2022. So those of you guys who don't understand all these terms, let me simplify. So he set up a company instead of being a sole proprietor, he went there and registered an LLC. After he registered an LLC, he for tax purposes, he chose as an S corp uh, so that he's taxed like that. And within that S corp, he purchased three properties, three long term rentals. And those three long term rentals. And uh, and then in addition to that, he had active business and that active business. And I have an ordinary loss in the year of 2022. I purchased a short term rental in 2022 in my personal name and sold one of my long term rental in 2022 for a gain. I just learned that I can offset my passive losses with my gain from sale of my rental property on form 8582. My question is that since my since I sold long term rental under my S Corp and my short term uh, rental is under my personal name, can I put them on 8582 to offset each other then flow it to through my 1040? So it's a very good question. Uh, first of all, before I answer that or answer that question, need to make uh, things clear here. Uh, when you buy real estate, you are buying real estate for appreciation. You are buying real estate for equity. You want uh, you are looking at for safety net, security net for buying real estate. So when you buy real estate, put it in an LLC, limited liability company. The reason for that is limited liability company do protect you better than being an S corporation. So why is why S why should why is that situation is better? Because in case of S corporation, if the S corporation owns the building, owns the real estate, let's say you want to close down the S corporation, then what happens? So if you want to close down the corp, uh, uh, the S corporation, when you say closing means dissolution. When you dissolve the S corporation, your asset will be treated as being sold at fair market value, and this is a paper profit which results in additional taxes for you. That's number one. Number two, if you if in any case you want to sell one properties, if you have three property, let's say in the S corporation, you want to sell one properties, then uh, the losses, if there's a gain from that sale, then it will be captured differently than it's on your personal name or LLC name. So it's very important not to put any real estate in the S corporation first. Now this this question, this person, this taxpayer, what he did is he did form an LLC but he treated it as an S corporation a tax purpose. This is wrong. First of all, he should not have done that. The reason which I just told you. So, but in spite of that, he did it. Now, in case of S corporation, all the losses flows on the K1. K1 is a, sh is a shareholder share of income deductions and credits from the S corporation which goes to the personal. So whatever losses he made from the sale of the asset or whatever gain he made from the sale of asset in the S corporation, it flows on the K1 and from the K1 flows to your 1040. And if you're owning real estate in your name and having a gain or losses from sale of those real estate in your name, it will be flowing on the schedule K1, it will be flowing on the schedule D. But the K1 will be flowing on the on a different schedule because it comes on the 4797 and other assets. Now, in that case, uh, it will be netting off. It will net off. Passive losses can be set off from income uh, gain from sale of property because it's a passive activity. If it's, a, uh, if it's active, then you can set off from other income. But yes, in this case, the answer to this question, definitely you can, you can set off this because it goes, everything is tested at personal level. As corporation flows at the, to the personal level, is doing investment at personal level, so that there will be netting of losses and gains uh, at the personal level. Yeah, and I, I think there are a lot of tax questions here, but the main point you probably want to write this down is if you're buying a real estate, whether it's in the state of California or a different state, it's a great idea to buy it under LLC and keep it that way. Yes. You know, don't do anything else with it. The, because, you know, in a, in a real estate, like a small property, you're not going to be generating a lot of income. More than likely, you'll be generating a lot of losses. So there's no reason for it to be treated as an S corp, yes. correct, Sanjeevji? Yes. So when there's a lot of income, that's when we kind of look into the S corporation strategy here. All right. So I I hope you guys are having fun with these questions because I think they they are full of uh, insights for all of us, and we're going to be talking about this subject in great details on um, on this webinar. So please get your questions ready. Here's the next one. In the December of 2022, 
my husband and I purchased a beach condo for personal use as well as rental. So they're kind of mixing. Mix use. Uh, all right. I will be self-managing, cleaning, and updating 100% of the time. She's letting us know that she'll be materially participating in this property. Lawn turns indicated as a second property. So it's a second residential home for them. Uh, what's my best option here? Get this rolling as known passive, meaning active. And in that case, do I need to secure a new loan, which makes it an investment property, or use the mortgage interest deduction and keep it as a second property? So uh, when you take a condo at a good place, uh, at a vacation, as a vacation home, and you are going back and forth and living in that vacation home, uh, and partly renting, partly partly doing the primary partly doing a second home, and partly renting out. So in that case, when there's a mixed use, of course uh, that uh, you have to you have to prorate the rental income, the rental days, fair rental days from the primary, uh, from your usage days. It yeah, up to 14 days is tax free of usage, but if there's more than 14 days, definitely you have to uh, like prorate the rental income and rental expenses based on the uh, like a ratio between primary of uh, your second home and your rental home. So that's one. Number two, if it's a send rental and self-managing that real estate like this, uh, this person was is doing, managing the real estate, uh, definitely it's better to take a loan or you can deduct the interest on the loan and you can also depreciate faster because he's managing it. Of course, he has to prove again the three principles. She has to put 750 hours or more in managing real estate. Uh, it, she has to be a multi participation in that uh, property and there should be at risk regulations for your money. So. If it fulfills all those requirements and put those time, yes, it's active. So taking a loan or representing faster is much better because it can offset this other, other income as well. Yeah, so she can basically, instead of treating it as a passive, real estate by default is passive. Yes. What she's saying is, look, I go to this property all the time. I do all the work in here. Maybe it's in my interest to treat it as an active income, which we think it is because it will make the more sense. But then she kind of added a little trick to it that she also use it for personal use. So Sanjeev is saying you kind of have to kind of prorate that right. how much of that use is actually uh, personal use there. So I think those are all the great questions. So if you guys have a question about your own real estate, then send it our way. Uh, and I'll make sure I get those questions answered for you. So thank you so much. And we're looking forward to seeing you on the webinar on May 13th. It's Saturday, 10 a.m. to noon. Uh, at the end of the webinar, we always open it up for questions where you can ask uh, Sanjeev Ji directly more questions like these. But if you send me in advance, I'll try to prepare for the webinar accordingly and get those answered. Uh, we also have a WhatsApp group that you can join and um, you can ask me your questions that way. Uh, obviously, we have a YouTube channel um, and then you can also reach to us uh, via our Facebook page. We have three offices here in the state of California. One is right here in Fremont. Uh, that's where we are recording right now. We have a one in Sunnyvale. It's a really large office. We just opened it up uh, this year. So you can uh, definitely come there. And then we have another office in Pleasanton. So three places where you can set up an appointment to come see Sanjeevji. Uh, we have a large staff, almost 25 people here. So any of those people are capable uh, of doing your taxes, both personal as well as business taxes. So, so big staff. And the reason why I bring that up is uh, more resources you have, uh, the better it is, right? We can get the job done. That's the, the point I'm trying to make. And lastly, I want to also educate people that Sanjeevji also have a huge experience in Indian taxes. And, and I bring that up because a lot of you guys also have properties in India. You, you migrated there, so there might be some questions related to that, how to deal with that. And we're going to briefly touch on that because the part of the webinar is about FBAR. Uh, so we will talk about that as well. Um, and before I let you go, Sanjeevji, FBAR deadline is also extended, right? Yes, so. <laughs> any, any deadline on April 18th is extended. And deadline on March 15th extended. Payment deadline for January 15th extended. May 15th deadline for non-profit extended to October 16th. So there you go. So if you at least you don't have to worry about that, that part. So if you don't know uh, what kind of um, balances you have in your bank account, might be a good idea to kind of get your hands on. So thank you so much, Sanjeevji, for your time today. These were all the awesome questions. Yes, I think a lot of questions, but yeah, I, mean, I want to see all of all of them on the webinar, and there will be a lot more information than those questions, but it will be better interaction, more questions, and better better visibility 
as how to convert from active from passive to active what are the ways to look into and what are ways to use them to your tax advantage yeah and and you guys can help me out if you guys because oftentimes what happens is during webinar like 50 people are asking the same question just in different verbiage right you, you know so like Sanjeev you already talked about you got active income you got passive income probably 30 percent of the questions are just related to distinguish between those two yeah. then the use of property some are personal use some are investment use some are mixed use kind of like what we saw in the questions uh, so most questions kind of revolve around those so if you send me those questions in ways I can kind of condense them and kind of get you the answers uh, in more clear fashion to get that going. So thank you so much guys for watching us today and I'll look forward to seeing you on the webinar and then at the live seminar that's coming up in, um, I think it's in June or July. No, it's in the live seminar is in August, August uh, 13th, 12th or 13th. Yeah, something like that. You can check it out on our website right on the homepage. You have an option for free webinar as well as the live seminar. So you can sign up there and then the year end on December 2nd, we're going to have the Wealth Summit for this year. So that will be a wonderful event as well. So thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. I'll look forward to seeing you the next